In this video, we will be comparing two different cross-sectional areas for unbraced beams undergoing lateral torsional buckling. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the failure mechanism of lateral torsional buckling, compare the lateral torsional buckling behavior between different cross-sections, and identify variables related to lateral torsional buckling. Shown here are two different cross-sections. Notice how they are made from the same two shapes arranged in different configurations. Therefore, the cross-sectional areas are the same, now if these were used for the same span length of an unbraced beam, which would hold more load? To answer this question, we are going to look at a quick demonstration using these two different cross-sectional areas. First, let's look at the setup for the cross-sectional area similar to an I-beam or W section. The beam is 10 feet long with point loads placed 3 feet and 6 inches from the supports. The section is constructed with two structural tracks screwed back to back. This forms a similar shape to a W section. However, the flange width to depth ratio is greater than the typical W section. The load will be applied by setting exercise weights onto this channel section. The load will then transfer to the beam by four chains. The equations for lateral torsional buckling are based on the load being applied to the shear center. Therefore, the load is applied to threaded rods running through the center of the web. Wood blocks were attached to the beam at the supports and where the load is being applied. This is to prevent other failure modes from occurring such as local buckling and bearing failure of the rod holes. Let us begin loading the beam. Note that there is an initial load from the channel section. We are starting with bigger weights but eventually using smaller weights as we get closer to the expected capacity. Watch how the beam deforms as the next weight is applied. The beam failed in lateral torsional buckling with 35 pounds on the channel section. Now let us take a look at the section similar to rectangular tubing. The setup is exactly the same except how the two structural tracks are attached together. Let us begin loading this beam now. We are loading it in a similar fashion as the previous beam. At this point, we unloaded it to fit even bigger weights. A total of 140 pounds was put on the beam, and it still has not failed. It is a clear winner. The rectangular section can hold more load. Let's take a look at why this is. Shown here is the equation for the moment capacity limited by lateral torsional buckling. This equation illustrates why the section similar to a rectangular HSS would have a greater resistance to this failure mechanism. The rectangular HSS section has a greater moment of inertia about the y-axis. It has a greater resistance to warping torsion. And most importantly, its resistance to pure torsion is much, much greater. This is due to the way shear flows around the section.